welcome Lynn Roundtree. My name is Taryn Willis and I'm with Ypsilanti Community Schools and I um, help to coordinate and plan uh, the YCS Jazz in the Parking Lot. So you're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank I've you. I've seen some of the communications go back and forth. And I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to oblige you guys and, and thankful for the opportunity. So yes, we're super excited to have you. This is our fifth annual uh, Jazz in the Parking Lot. Obviously, last year was a little bit different, but we did have Chuck and Gwen Scales perform, um, and they were amazing. But you know, I'm super excited to be back outside. Uh, right. in the community <laughs> and you know I said when I was going over um, opportunities to like field out different artists I was like you know what I always said I wanted to have Lynn Roundtree and I you know fished through Facebook and got your information but we have one person in common do you know Ooh. who that person is uh, my manager <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. So I met you probably about eight years ago um, at Monica Jones' house. And oh, Monica, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Monica point. and I went to college together, and I remember you were walking around with your trumpet, and at that point, I was like, you know what? One of these days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him to do an event. And um, eight years later, I did not forget. <laughs> well, that's why you always treat people well. You always, uh, you know, leave leave as as much of a good impression on people as possible and that's because you never know absolutely so. absolutely so tell us a little bit about yourself i see that you are from virginia um or that area and that's where you kind of started playing the trumpet and how did you get to detroit okay oh okay. there we are okay something happened um well i i was born in uh i was born in new york city and lived there for a while and moved down to uh, my family. My father was uh, in the United States Customs, and every time he would get a promotion, they would move him around. And so we ended up down in, in, in the D.C. area, um, in Washington, D.C., and then we moved out to Seattle. He got another promotion, uh, and then he came back for another promotion back to the D.C. area, uh, and we moved outside in Virginia to Alexandria, Virginia, and uh, that's where I finished high school. And then went down to uh, Florida A&M on a, on a music scholarship, band scholarship, Play with the famed Martian Hunt. Oh yes, the famous. Uh, <laughs> and I thought I was uh, I thought I was big time until I got there, and and everyone else everyone's big time, and so you're small time when you get there. So uh, <laughs> you realize that you have to, to have to work to become big time again. Yeah. And so uh, that's that's how I ended up uh, the, my progression through uh, through through all these areas, and then and to end up at FAMU. Nice. I mean, and you know, as uh, I, I did not go to an HBCU, obviously, but my all my family did. And you know, shout out to those institutions that just keep that music alive, keep the culture alive, just period. So yeah, it was a cultural thing when I went yeah. down because uh, I had gone to uh, very diverse schools, some not as diverse, somewhere I was the only one that looked like me, um, yeah. and so I felt like uh, the opportunity not only because of the music, uh, but like you said, you hit it on the nail on the head when you said the cultural experience. Uh, after coming from a, a you know a couple situations where I, I'm I'm the only X and a bunch of uh, Ys or in a bunch of yeah. O's, uh, <laughs> you know you come down now now everyone's an X now everybody's you know you don't have to worry about that now you worry about the regular stuff like am I cool am I not cool you know this and it's so so you have an opportunity to, to not worry so much about race and to worry more about or to concentrate and focus more on character development and and uh, you know your relationships and then where you fit in and then obviously you take it on out to the real world which yeah. is not that, that's why it's that's why the the, the what is it the show real world uh and, oh yeah and, on mtv <laughs> not real world. what's the what's the one i can't even write on the one came after the cosby show the the oh different, different world different, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a different world my favorite character so i'm yeah. all in on <laughs> different world <laughs> It was just like that in a different world. It was a different world down there. But you know, you're coming out into the real world, but you know, you just get an opportunity to experience things without a certain element, you know, overhanging uh, yeah. over an entire life. So that's what I gleaned out of that, in addition to all of the other the fundamental things that I, I learned down there. Well, and I mean, you know, again, we always encourage um, our students to look at all of the different options, and definitely uh, the HBCU sector is one of those. So, um, and it's the Rattlers, correct? Let me make sure I'm. Oh, yes. <laughs> See, my sister went to Hampton and then my parents went to West Virginia State. So, okay. you know, 
Well, you we, know a little we, bit about it. <laughs> we give each other we give each other grief, but at the end of the day, we're all uh, we're all unified. Absolutely, that, absolutely. So you you have been playing. I'm outside, so if you're seeing me, swipe at a bug. Um, well, yeah, I see you <laughs> bugs. So better you than better you than me. <laughs> right. When you have two children, you have to do all of the interviews outside. Um, right. So I mean, you are located in Detroit. Um, what's the music scene like in Detroit for our viewers to kind of you know navigate different opportunities to hear you, but other artists in the city i am kind of removed from the the local scene because now you know i'm i'm, I'm traveling around uh doing my thing um yeah tell us about I, that in terms of what's going on now I, i'm kind of removed from the scene so i'm not sure i know uh detroit is still obviously so rich in music uh and music music uh talent musical talent i mean you know a lot of the guys that you know, play tours out on the road are pulling, still pulling musicians from Detroit to yeah. go out on the tour. So wherever I am in the world, I'm always probably going to see somebody playing with somebody that's from Detroit. Um, so, you know, but, you know, when I was coming up the music scene, I think it used to be, I don't know, I think because of the technology and social media and all that stuff, uh, I guess people feel a little more connected to each other, but in order for us to be connected as music, uh, as musicians, we actually had to go out <laughs> because we didn't have the Facebook and all that stuff. And this is not 30 <laughs> years ago. This is 10 years ago. You know, we were, we were, we would chill. We used to see each other. Hey, you off tour? And we used to all go to a jam session and talk about the tour life and who you're touring with and just, you know, steal each other's chops and steal each other's licks and see what was going on. So that used to be a great, uh, a great environment, a great vibe. And, and, you know, certainly I learned a lot. Uh, with that, plus I had a local band, so I had I had uh, one of the top you know local bands in in, in the city in Detroit, and we used to play at uh, at, at every, you name it. We played every, I played everywhere. Floods, I played you know uh, <laughs> every, little, every little wedding, everything you know, and, and key club or key club days popping. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know the chocolate, uh, what do you call it, the chocolate bar or the chocolate place <laughs> over there was that was coming when I was kind of leaving. That was coming around. So yeah. It's a it's a great scene. I'm not sure exactly what's going on in terms of venues. Uh, you know, there's still Cliff Bells. Uh, there's still a couple other venues that uh, that floods is still you know got the music going. Of course, with the pandemic, you know things changed a lot as well. So uh, I'm just happy to see people out working again. Uh, yeah. doing, uh, doing things Absolutely. Weekend. I was at Cliff Bells a couple of weekends ago, and it was really nice. Now yeah. let me ask you. So I. Um, who inspired you to be a trumpeter? Um, you know, I'm a big Lee Morgan fan, so oh, I'm like, gosh. who in the you know in the Renaissance you, era? You, know, you just you just took my heart. <laughs> Lee Morgan. Oh, oh my I God. love it. So so yeah, I mean, the, the, obviously the trumpet players are ins inspirations to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people like uh, like like Lee Morgan, like Freddie Hubbard, and I, I classify a lot of these musicians because you know it's it's one thing to to have be a genius um, in terms of technique, yeah. uh, you know, knowing your instrument, knowing how to get up and down your instrument, uh, having the, the wherewithal, the, the, the theory, the knowledge about the music, but to have that and also play it so slick and funky yeah. <laughs> that you touch somebody's soul. I think those two sometimes are, they're, you know, they're, they're, people, people make a mistake, make the mistake of mistaking supreme genius talent for uh, being able to connect to their listeners and to, to the soul of the listeners. And Lee Morgan embodied that. Lee Morgan, not only was he a prodigy um, on the trumpet, you know, 20 years old playing with Art Blakey, you know, in that chair that was normally filled by Clifford Brown. I mean, you know, here he is playing in that chair. Uh, and, uh, and and then Freddie Hubbard came right, right after Lee. And we know they're the same age. Lee was still you know, way ahead of Freddie, but not that long. Right. And so both of those guys are so soulful, uh, you know, not only with their technique, but, you know, just in the way they were able to, to just play and make you feel the music. So you, when you said Lee Morgan, that's that's one of my number one guys, man. I love Absolutely. Lee. Sometimes I just wish I could just like go back. Oh, you practice. go back. Oh my gosh, you go back for a day. <laughs> and all of these great legends were playing across the street from each other on, on uh, 52nd Avenue in, in, in New York. And Absolutely. these guys were, I mean, and you just coming up seeing all of this stuff. You yeah. know, Frank Hubbard and, and they, they didn't, you know, a lot of these guys didn't really go to, you know, the schools and all that stuff. They, oh. they, learn in, and they learn at the jam sessions, they oh. learn sitting around trading riffs. They learn, you know, their theory from masters that had been before them. And that's how I think they learned that grit. 
And same thing with Miles Davis. Miles Davis, was, I think, was probably my one of my number one influences, um, just because of obviously he was so soulful when he played, um, the, the 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 beauty and the tone of his uh, of his horn. But not only that, but just the way he wrote music, the way he you know was able to change the direction uh, of of music, and and actually because of him, jazz was more widely accepted. I mean, he he was the one that. He's responsible for creating that West Coast cool jazz, what they call cool jazz. <laughs> it's a little easier on the ears because, you know, before, you know, you had the big band music and everything, the dance hall music, that was considered the jazz and that the that was I guess the R and B of the day. And yeah. then and then when they started putting poll taxes and taxes on uh, not poll taxes, but taxes on the clubs, you know, that they were that were people were dancing and that's how jazz was actually created because they said, We're gonna get the guys from these big bands, from Count Basie's band, and we're we're gonna have them on our club. But you can't have them dances because I don't want to get I don't want to get taxed. So that's when they started. They took all of the standards and just and just uh, sped them up so people wouldn't dance, and that created a whole art form. Yeah. Um, but it, it 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 was hard to relate with a lot of people. So that's when Miles took that concept and said, "Okay, look, we're gonna smooth it out. We're gonna you know make it a little more listenable, a uh, little more accessible to people uh, to listen to." And then we're going. Then he changed music again when he went into his his modal uh, playing with Kind of Blue. And then he changed music again when he started bringing in electric instruments. People weren't even playing electric basses and and all that stuff before Miles came out with his bitches blues sex sessions and and all of that stuff. So yeah, Miles in terms of his writing, his ability to put bands together, the top bands in the in the world. I mean, you know, everybody knows Miles. His name transcends the music. And so that's yeah. that's my biggest inspiration. Him, Quincy Jones too. We can say the same thing about Quincy. <laughs> I mean, and a lot of people don't understand the impact Quincy Jones had. They just see you know, like the Hollywood part. I'm like, no, um, you know. And it's it's always lovely to hear uh, musicians' perspectives on people that they looked up to and admired. Um, and you know, that's one thing and one of the reasons that we continuously do these type of events because we just want somebody to be inspired mm -hmm. um, with the arts. And you know, just you know, look, there's a a person that looks like you, and this is what they're able to do. Okay. Um, and, you know, for me, you said different world, like Cosby Show and all of those things, the jazz in the background and the art, mm -hmm. really, you know, settled in my mind. And as an adult, like I already knew about these things. So, oh, yeah. um, I mean, you know, aside from all his current issues, you know, he oh was <laughs> for, for exposing a lot of people to a lot of the things that, that culturally, you know, we wouldn't have been exposed to. I mean, he had yeah. Dizzy Lucky on the show. I remember that that mm -hmm. when he had Dizzy yeah. on, <laughs> on the show. Yep. I'm like, wow, he's got Dizzy Gillespie on the yeah. show. And, you know, I wasn't as much into it. But after that, I'm like, Dizzy's cool, man. You know, and so, you know, this, 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 the little things that stick with people. I mean, you can live a whole lifetime and one little thing that happens in your life, one little encounter, one thing that you see can dramatically change the trajectory of your life. Yeah. Uh, well, good and sometimes for bad. But, you know, when, when we're talking about good things, just people like you said that look like us yeah. you know th that are doing things and and we have a culture we're not just you know we just come from slavery and, and all this right. we're, woe we're is me. You know, we, have, we have a culture yeah, yeah. yeah. We, have, we created we've developed we've evolved things and it's important for especially our youth it's important for them to see that um like you said and people that look like us and uh and, and that's 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 part of I mean, you probably gonna get to that point but that's part of you know what what drives me and why but continue to push me forward as well, just to be an example um, for people that are also aspiring to do the same thing. Absolutely. So on Friday, what can we expect? I'm super excited. I checked the weather. It's supposed to be great weather. We have over 45 vendors coming out, small businesses and community organizations, food. Um, all of the kids get a free barbecue, so they get hamburgers, hot dogs. Um, you know, sure, don't some... give me a hamburger before I eat, before I, before I play, because I'll be done. <laughs> That's why I tell, tell well, I can't food vendors out there, soul food. We we have it going on this Friday at uh, YCS Shepherd Field from six to nine. We have um, our DJ coming out. He's gonna do the pre uh, with yeah. some dance hustle lessons, and then you come on at seven. And like, I just cannot wait. <laughs> we're, we're 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 gonna give you a good good show. I mean, we are rolling right now. We've got. You know, we, we're happy to be out and you can feel it and see it in the playing and the guys that play. I mean, everywhere I went this last, my last little, because uh, I'm on uh, a little little tour right now with, you know, my new release. 
uh, just coming out. We're doing, doing a lot of tour support, but it's always a blessing to come home and to uh, and and to play for your hometown folks. And especially after, I don't think a lot of people have seen me in a long time. I mean, you know that that you know they see me doing this, they see me doing that, right. but they're like, when are you going to play at at home? Or sometimes you're playing here, playing there that they may not be able to get to. But in the community, you know, yeah. I mean, this is this is where I'm from in the community. I, I, you know, I played in the community. We I've done a lot of things in the city of Detroit and, and Ypsilanti and, and in Detroit Metro. Um, but I haven't done it in a long time. So I think people uh, are excited. We're is equally excited. Uh, so you, you're going to see some 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 excitement on stage um, and it's pure joy. I mean, yes. pure joy in, in, in our playing. Um, and I'm playing. I'm bringing the guys that uh, you know. I think we just played together a couple of weeks ago when I did the Elkhart Jazz Fest in uh, in, in Indiana, and uh, it was just that was our first bona fide full show mm-hmm. since COVID. <laughs> we didn't know what we would get on stage. I mean, we're all out of practice. It took me. You know, it takes me ten minutes to set up my rig. It took me. I had forty five minutes because I didn't. I forgot what I was. You know, it's like riding a bike, but you're like, okay. I got to do this. I got to do that. It. You got to get back I, into it. <laughs> I have forgotten the right set list for the band. I'm like, usually I'm on top of everything. Like, you know what? We're just happy to be out. And and we played our tails off. And, uh, and the people were people were like, whoa, okay. So you're going to get that plus some because we're back home. Because now, yeah. you know, we're back home. We are, we're in our, we're in our environment. We're at, you know, with our people. And and I just I just want, uh, we're just going gonna to let you have it. Well, we are excited. This is happening this Friday, uh, July 23rd, 6 to 9 at Ypsilanti Community School, Shafford Field. Bring a chair. Um, we're going to still social distance. We're going to make sure everybody's out there safe and have a great time. Hang, hang, hang tight. I think somebody's calling in. Oh, man. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Hey, this, we, we know how it goes. So yeah, yeah. Um, again, we're excited to see you this Friday, July 23rd. It is a free event. You do not have to sign up on Eventbrite. You do not have to um, get any type of pre-tickets. We just do that to get a sense of who's coming out. But again, we are excited and we will see you on Friday. Thank you. I'll see you. I'm ready. We're ready to go. We haven't, <laughs> have a, we're ready to have a good time. We're ready to sweat. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be hot out there. It's going to be about 85. Now, that's about, actually, this is our coolest one because, yeah. you know, it's July and usually we get that 90 degree. But right, by right. the time it, the evening comes, it's it's simmered down and, you know, we're just out there having a good time. Right, right. We're going to have a good time. So we, All we, right. Thank you, uh, Lynn Roundtree, Soul yeah. Trumpeter. Uh, yeah. the, the, the conversation has been great. I appreciate you coming on. And again, we'll see you on Friday. Yeah.